the NBA itself is just a great, you know, area to cover, and doing it with a team of such rich tradition, like the Celtics, which has such a, a passionate fan base, such a knowledgeable fan base, and to be honest, this I think is a team that's a real in a really interesting spot right now with, you know, so many big questions, so many big pieces in place with its future and Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, and for me, you know, just trying to put together the pieces of the puzzle of what the team is trying to do on a, not just on a, a day in and day out basis, but what they're trying to do in the big picture. So that's something that having been able to cover them for the last 10 plus years now, I've really tried to dig deep on and it's uh, been a really rewarding experience so far. I've been a sports nut my whole life. And so to be perfectly honest, um, growing up, I whether it was baseball, basketball, football, I was pretty much into everything at that point. Um, as I got older, basketball was the one thing I could still not play competitively, but at least, you know, get out there and play. Um, so uh, whether it was, you know, watching it, you know, playing um, with friends or just in the rec league or whatever, um, it's something where I've always kind of gravitated towards the game itself. And then um, as I got into writing, um, during my college years, uh, it was something that that's where the opportunity to lie was within basketball. So that's when, you know, this was, you know, something that I love to, to love to write and love to write about sports. So um, that led to more and more opportunities in terms of covering, covering the NBA and the Celtics. And to be honest, it's um, the more and more time I spent with it, the more and more I enjoyed it. And that's um, kind of led to where we are today. Celtics Twitter is, I guess, it's it's anything you want it to be. There's so many corners of it. Um, it's it's very informed. It's very passionate. Um, it's very um, it's tough to make everyone happy on it, to be perfectly honest. And but all things considered, I think it's a great place. And I think it kind of is the perfect environment of what. Um, of Twitter is, I mean, for what it should be as a medium in terms of you get perspectives from all different places and, you know, you, there's certain parts of Celtics Twitter that loves Marcus Smart, there are other parts of Celtics Twitter that really wish to see would clean up the shot selection. So you get a nice, when you take it from it, the entire picture of it, I think you get a pretty good balance level, but um, I'd say more than anything else, it can be prone to... Um, overreaction, but that's, um, I think, anything online these days. I loved the passion Kevin Garnett brought to the table every night. Um, he made us wait usually 75, 90 minutes after the game to talk to him, and that would earn the, uh, for the writers on deadlines, I luckily was not one of those people at the time, but you would um, lead to many long nights, but when he did talk, you would have to listen. And he was so, again, he was so passionate about the game, about his teammates, and you would always, you know, learn something from him in those spots. So that was something that I thought always made him a great interview um, year after year after year. And I was only able to cover the last couple years of his career, but it was something where, you know, that type of player, um, I think is, you can see, why he made such a big impact on the culture in Boston for the team when you had a chance to talk to him. For me, it's honestly giving them a little bit more. Um, for me, just as uh, a reporter coming up and just knowing how many great reporters there are in this region, um, you got to give them something extra. And I think as information gets out there more and more in the new day, this new day and age on social media, you know, fans are becoming smarter. And so it's not just the what anymore, it's the why and the how. And that's, for my job as a reporter, that's what I try to do most. And things like the collective bargaining agreement or NBA trade rules, that can give you, like, for the casual fan will give you a huge headache and it's a nightmare to try to navigate. For me, 10 years in, I still have to, there are still times where I'm still learning, but at the same time, 
I want to make sure that you know, as a fan, what the team is looking at and how certain moves not just impact, you know, things around the league, but have an underlying impact of, okay, why are the Celtics not going to be able to trade for Blake Griffin or Andre Drummond? Or why, you know, they didn't, they looked for a sign and trade for Gordon Hayward as opposed to just letting him walk. Those are the things that, as a fan, you are curious about and can be complicated to find out, but I'm trying to hopefully bring that knowledge to you in an easily digestible way that really enhances the experience for what isn't just happening for the team on the court on a night in and night out basis, but what the team is trying to achieve behind the scenes. So I'm going to try to give you a bit of both behind the scenes stuff and obviously the breakdown of what the team's doing on the court and what how that impacts into the big picture as well. 